The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Okay, let's get the obvious reference out of the way early. I am Spartacus. Written, illustrated and composed by one Ian Potts. It's the 1988 Commodore 64, one man slave rebellion em up, Spartacus, the sword slayer. I'm Spartacus, I'm Spartacus. Spartacus. Spartacus, the great Roman hero, was enslaved as a child and his parents killed. He was trained for combat in the arena with sword, shield and spear, always waiting for the day he could have his revenge on the Roman Empire. Now he has been called to the arena to defeat the champion gladiators and lead an escape by the slaves. Things are off to a tough start for Spartacus. Well, they would be. He's unlikely to start an uprising if they're keeping him in the Ritz and paying him 2 million denarii a year. Also, I read the phrase House of Lentulus and immediately imagined a Roman fast food restaurant specialising in lentil dishes. The worst fast food place imaginable, in other words. You have three fighting moves with which to attack your opponents. Both players' health are shown as shields above the main display and are deteriorated when wounds are inflicted. When all health is lost, you die, and you only have one single life, so it's game over. Gladiators, an eagle, and a rain of arrows all try to stop your attempt to free the slaves. The opposing gladiator's weapon is presumably meant to be a trident, but looks more like an oversized novelty table fork. If the mighty Neptune, Lord of the Sea, came bursting through the swirling form carrying that thing, he'd be immediately laughed back to his undersea grotto. And rightly so. I'm not going to lie, Sword Slayer pretty much falls on its face, but as a semi-humorous budget hack em up, it's brilliant. Stout warriors flail their sword arms with only three moves at hand, with hits comically signified by slurges of blood. But a stab in the face from the first gladiator's trident is one of the goriest sights on a Commodore 64. I mean, we had the spiders in Forbidden Forest, but this has to be right up there. Humour begins with the white noise audience applause, which sounds like the tide coming in, and continues with awful sound and animation on the eagle, who is more of a joke than a ferocious enemy. The absolute classic part of this game is Oblivious the Gladiator. The fact he's called Oblivious because he ignores your attacks completely. A fact that had me in fits of laughter. Well, almost. Sword Slayer doesn't add up to much, but what it lacks in technical expertise, it makes up for in the humour, for sure. The deformed sprites wobble about in the nicely drawn arena, whacking each other with no apparent effect apart from the mentioned blood spurt. It looks a little better on the Amiga version, released under the name Gladiators. Individually, the levels are nicely connected by the ongoing storyline, I suppose, which in itself brought a laugh, or three. I mean, this is an example of the importance of punctuation, because you could read the above sentence and interpret it to mean that Crassus is fighting gladiators, occasionally taking a glance over at Spartacus to see how he's doing. Spartacus the Sword Slayer is a barely functional mess of jagged sprites that might be interacting with each other. But, if they are, then it's according to the strange and unfathomable laws of a universe beyond the realms of mortal man. The collision detection isn't great either. You're witness to sights like Spartacus crouching down and jamming his sword into the gladiator's nethers so often and with such venom that you begin to worry for his mental state with no result, only for the gladiator to waft his comedy fork in the rough vicinity of Spartacus's head, taking a chunk of the hero's health bar with it. I'll give Spartacus the Sword Slayer this. It does have some impressively large sprites, moving around and clashing blades, even if those sprites don't quite resemble humans. Humans that have spent generations breeding on a planet with much higher gravity than Earth, maybe. Chunky Astro Romans. Wait, wasn't that the setting for an episode of Star Trek? Don't move. You'll only die. It's Grand Theft Spartacus, and his wanted level is up to 5 stars. Time to make a hasty exit then. 
The chariot escape is a fittingly tedious end to the game that suddenly screeches to a halt when the game feels like it, rather than because of anything the player did. And with that, Spartacus the Sword Slayer is over. Yes, Spartacus lives to fight another day, until around 71 BC, where his uprising was thoroughly destroyed by the Roman forces and thousands of his followers were crucified along the roads of the empire. Well, it's always good to end on a cheerful note, isn't it? Spartacus the Sword Slayer is a bad game. A boring game. A game that doesn't really work. Yet, I can't bring myself to hate it. Mostly that's because hating a Commodore 64 game is such a colossal waste of energy. But also because this whole game was made by one person who was trying to make an interesting game. And therefore, it doesn't summon the ire that a heartless licensed cash-in would. There are loads of C64 fighting games that aren't an awkward mess to play, like IK+. And if Spartacus the Sword Slayer's combat was a little better, then it could have been an interesting take on the genre. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video, and if you could, please hit like, and maybe let me know what you thought of this game in the comment section. Not every game we revisit will be amazing, of course, but hopefully some will bring back memories for you, and if that's what you like the idea of, then subscribe to the channel and we'll revisit more Commodore 64 games and seek out some classics. As always, I massively appreciate the support and genuinely hope to see you all in the next one, coming up. Until then, bye for now.